Hello all, Scott Grove here once again. Um, just kind of in a G mood today, so I'm just going to teach you some more country stuff by request. Um, very basic licks in the key of G. Of course, you can transpose them that quick or that quick. I'm better with my right hand. What's that tell you? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, today we're going to use this guitar. Okay, we're going all the way back to what year it was. It's 1993. This is the Gibson Les Paul Studio Light M3 guitar. So you got one switch here. You can just flick it down and you go straight into two humbuckers only. Or, and that's done via this five-way switch. Or you can flick the switch up like I have it. it splits both of these and you have a strap. Single coil, single coil, single coil. Five way switch. So, guess what? Yep, strap. <laughs> Back to single coil. Second. Middle. Fourth. And bridge. Or neck. <laughs> anyway, so we're here to learn licks, not about so much about the guitar. But great guitar, carved top, the whole nine yards. If you ever get a chance to get any of the M3 series guitars, they made a few different ones. Of course, the M3, this one, the uh, Gibson Victory MV10 or MVX, they all had the same um, uh, duh, uh, M3 circuitry, so you could have three single coils or two humbuckers or whatever. We even have a place where we can do, do a, a uh, kill switch. Okay, so all kinds of fun stuff to be found within this stuff. You don't see these often, but cool acts. Okay, um, again, in the key of G, why I say again? Because I just recorded a video two seconds ago. Everything was in the key of G. This is going to be just very simple country licks that everybody can use in any key but G. I'm just in the G mood today. Okay? So, um, in the key of G, I'm going to be doing it out of the same position I was doing earlier too. So if you're looking at a D chord, moved up here where you're at 7-7. Seven, seven. And then eight. Okay, so up there in the G. For those who aren't familiar with me, I do tend to use my fingers a lot. When I palm my pick, I end up going into Gene Simmons mode. Dude! You know, so I, I play like that. Okay? So I'm picking with these fingers, so it's different than the whole hybrid thing. You use a pick, you use your hybrid thing, whatever you want. Everything's going to be about this hand for the most part. But then again, the first lick I'm going to teach you sounds better if you use um, the typical um, picking with your fingers. <laughs> gives you that percussive thump because you're actually like a bass. That a pick can't give you. It's just a whole different thing. Anyway, the first lick I want to teach you, um, let me find my drum track that I had earlier. And just actually speed this puppy up. Okay, go at it again. Get back in there. And, oh, I switched. I see what happened. I want to go back to my country beat. Yes, this is a Casio. I know. I'm not supposed to be using these things. <laughs> okay, there's where I was. And tempo. There it is. Okay, we can use that in a little bit. Uh, sorry for making you check out whatever you had to check out on my anatomy there. Okay, the thing I'm doing here with the first lick. A 
okay, is going to be that. Okay, this is using your thumb on the B string. We're using the B string and the E string only for the first part. Okay, if you want to get ahead of me, go ahead. Whatever finger you want to use, I use my middle finger going up to the 8th fret of the B string. That's your G note. And then going up to the 7th fret of the E string. So twice on the B. Then you can either do a click or hit the G note again. Okay, so either way. Okay, I like the clicks. That's the clicks. Okay, by doing that. So you see what I'm doing over here. That's a band-aid, it is not a pick, so I don't think anything. Okay, back on this hand, it's chromatically going up, which means every fret. All the way up to the 10th fret, so 7, 8, 9, 10, with the B string click, or you can play that note if you want. So to pick it up from the 10th fret, okay that's going all the way back to the 6th fret on the high E string, bending it up, giving it some attitude, some stank, and then grabbing with your ring finger back on the G note, 8th um, fret on your B string. There's your phrasing. Okay, and anything you want to do with it. Okay, really cool thing there. Is going up a step and a half, three frets. Makes it very easy if you're using nine gauge strings on a Gibson. Okay, uh, the different scale length makes it very easy for light strings to bend so easily. Okay, so now I'm just backing off. Okay, going down to the uh, sixth fret on the B string. Up a step and a half. So act like you're going up to your B flat. Pull off, and then back to there. Okay. I did that, pull off from um, 8 to 6, and I'll grab the 7th fret of the G, okay, okay, again, okay, so now you kind of get where it's going, I'm going to the 4 position just for a different sound. to where I was, just for fun. Hey, let's go to the neck. It's got kind of a cool blue sound to it. Okay, so that's the first little lick. Um, from there, um, I just want to show you this, which was, um, let's see where we're going to take it. <laughs> okay, that lick. You've heard it a million times. For those who don't know it, this is who it's for. Um, I teach simple stuff because people need lessons at the beginning. They don't need lessons when they get better. So if you're here for, and you're a hot shot, and you already know it all, um, go play it all. I teach beginners and intermediates, so if you haven't figured that out by now, not that I can't play by internet, but those people don't need lessons. Uh, the rest of you do. That's why I'm here. Okay, so. So what we're going to do is tie this lick in, in its entirety, at moderate pace, it'll be this. Okay, that's going to 
be the whole thing. So what we don't know is after... Now that you're there... Okay, you already set up. We're going from the 8 to the 6. Pull off on your B string. Now hit that G string at the 7th. Okay, I'm doing my finger thumb. Okay, you can see what I'm doing. So pull off. 8 to 6. G string. Back to 6 on the B. Okay. Just any way to get it down there. I like to go from 7, slide it to 5. Just so quick. That 7 hardly even gets heard. You just hear that it's moving. Okay, so 7, 5, pull off to 3. Then we're going to the 5th fret of the G, I'm sorry, which is a G note. 5th fret of the D string, G note. Okay. Okay. Our next one is on the G string. Okay, fifth fret. So you're bending up a whole step. That's called a pre-bend. Start with a bend up so it actually sounds like the D note on the seventh fret. And then pull off to the third fret and give it plenty of vibrato. Now finger you want to use okay middle finger ring finger I don't care but slide it up on that B string up to the eighth fret on there to hit your G note and that's the end okay so that I needed. Then. Or, however you want to do it. I'm getting lost within my own self because there are so many places you can just go. It's not a cop out. Yeah, I can. I screw up as much as anybody. Trust me. But use everything you have. Okay, so do whatever you want. I'm just using exactly what I showed you, but just goofing around. So if I was to play with just those notes, nothing else, and play it so much softer. Text one last time. You like? Do we have to? Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So that is um, one whole lick. Um, another one that we can use straight from there is to remember that there are cool bends. 
that you can do since I had you do the original okay I know you already want here I know it's not played that way but it sounds just as good same thing the difference okay while you're there might as well bend a string while you're holding that G string okay um, nothing more than simply bending your G string up okay keep everything there bend your G string which is at a D note that one I'm sure if you're not pinky ring finger third fret then on E and B string then of course second fret on your G hit all three just bend your G string up a whole step and the other one here we're playing the D, uh, G chord put your fingernail underneath your D string when you bend it up so that you don't get noise of crashing into the strings. Know that that's going to go up over there, okay? Make as little noise as possible. So just drag that string along with you. Okay? Okay? That's just another little flavor and um, another one that you all probably know um, is going to be just strictly thanks to um, people like uh, Warren Zevon, but those type of things is this typical that thing. But while you're here, okay. This sounds like there's more strings going on. It sounds like you're using open strings, which you're not. Okay. Okay, it sounds like you're using more strings than two. Okay, you're actually picking three strings, but you only have to move, maneuver two. Okay, so you can be at the seventh fret again on your G and your E string. Hit your G string. Okay, the pull off is weird because you're pulling off on the E string to a click, to nothingness. But what you're actually doing is pulling off to the meat, that's right, I said it, that is right here on your finger. So when you pull off, you're not going to open E string. You can, it's goofy sounding. That's just cooler. Okay, so you're pulling off. Okay, in the next three, just to let you know, after you make that first pull off to the meat, it's gonna be your first finger on the B string, just playing because you have lifted your finger off of here and you're going to play the B string then the G string so you have three clicks in a row so you have two notes the G string then the E string click it off to your meat so you're letting loose and it's actually hitting that part of your finger that is touching the string behind there anyway if you're not totally curved and arched. It just takes getting used to. Okay. Okay, so however you want to handle that is You, never again do you play the G string. Just the first time. Until you
until you get to here. Then you hit the 4th fret, and then the 3rd fret. 4th on the G, 3rd on the E. Okay? Okay, a lot more effect if you really jerk it off. Okay, what is cool about this, um, even cooler, my pick is getting hung up in this stupid band-aid. Um, great day to teach this. Um, is now, I'm just throwing ideas at you, okay? There's no method to the madness from here on out. It's just watching the uh, counter on my tape roll down. Take the G chord now. Okay, everything else, do with it what you will. You can go backwards. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, part of that is what I'm getting ready to show you. That same G chord that looks like a D, make it into a G7. That's right, invert it so that you have that G note back here at the 6th fret and then put everything back where it was. Not actually where it was, you have to use the same fingers in different places. So you end up with a G7 here. Here I'm not using any picks at all, okay? So there's no uh, picks allowed here, okay? So both, uh, my split screen, how do you like that? High tech, huh? Okay, so thumb, same kind of thing. High E string, you're pulling it off against your meat again. That's right. Again, you're not hitting anything else, just the high E string after the initial G string. Same two clicks on the B string and the G string. Okay, so you're taking the whole thing, moving it back, one fret. Just a cool thing. Okay, so it gives you another way to get back to your G. Climb up with it until you just finally get up to where you can get the G again. But as long as there's a bunch of clicks, uh, there is no theory involved because clicks are not involved in theory. They are just percussion. So you're just hitting a strange notes. Brad Paisley does it all the time. Um, God, Pete Anderson do, does it all the time. Eddie Van Halen. What was that song? Finish what you started. Basically that kind of thing, but from what we're at, you can finally end up on your G. But you, it gives you all kinds of ideas of what you can do with things that you already know. If you already know all this stuff, information to play these. Okay.
there you go. Um, just some information in G, okay? Um, just a bunch of noise. I was asked for uh, more guitar licks, uh, country stuff, and that should give you a little bit of uh, fun, if nothing else. Okay, so once again, Scott Grove with some country stuff. Again, with the 1993 Gibson Les Paul Studio Light M3. Very cool guitar for a Gibson. <laughs> now, if they did get rid of that Tunomatic, it would be sweet. Um, and then put a bolt on neck and it'd be sweeter. Put a brass nut, it'd be sweeter. Some locky tuner, sweeter. Straighten out that headstock, sweeter. Okay, so let's just call it a fender and it'd be sweet. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's just for my friends at mylastpaul.com. Give them shit. Why? Because it's fun. You know, whether they like me or not. I, I think some of them have one of them gay crushes on me, but it happens when you look as good as I do. I don't It's just part of the fun. Anyway, so have fun playing with your G strings. Again, put those, of course, in any key you want. It's just more free information. Um, enjoy playing with yourself or with your big Casio with your playing with your big organ <laughs> okay and um happy picking okay uh remember you can always pick your friends and you can pick your nose just never pick your friend's nose it's, it's not sanitary okay just that's where i draw the line i'm sick but that's that's enough okay later